Yeah. Can't have men's stuff with anything but lamb. I'm sorry. One time he told me to make men's stuff with chicken. I said, I'm absolutely never going to do that. Man. Yes. Why didn't you divorce me? First thing I think about when somebody says Palestinian food is family. Family, friends, eating together, big meals, hearty and heavy. All Palestinian dishes are cooked in large portions for the purposes of feeding a group of people. We don't have all of the traditional Palestinian cuisine in our menu. That was something we thought about in the beginning. I was like, if this is going to be a Palestinian restaurant, we've got to have all the traditional Palestinian food. And he said to me, you can't just shock the community in the world with all of these foods that they've never heard of. You can add some traditional foods, but also add the foods that are regional to the Middle East. And I added the top most popular ones, makluba, mensaf, msakhan, and it's all amazing. It all tastes great. My name is Ayat, and this is my husband. My name is Abdul Nani. And we opened the Ayat restaurant together. I first met her as an attorney to do some like contractual work for me. And then I saw her, I just put the papers to the side and I said, are you married, not married, and got to know her. Yeah, we'll um, never know if he, if he reached out to me for the contractual purposes or not. No, it was actually. <laughs> I remember when we were engaged, he sat me down and like, what do you, what do you really want to do in life? At the time I was working in the district attorney's office, I was a prosecutor. I said, well, honestly, my dream has always been to open up like an official catering business, just serving traditional Middle Eastern Palestinian food. And he said, so do it. And we kind of just went head on together. I told my husband, I'm like, okay, I can't start anything till my mom comes and gives her blessings. And so I tell her, Ma, you have to come. I'm like, okay, taste this. How's it taste? No, it needs this, it needs that. I needed her to overlook everything to really know that we can launch it. And every week she'd just come and check in on things. And I, I would love when she comes, because I'd say, hey, what do you do this? How do you do this? What do you recommend for this? Ma, I don't know if this is working. And so it just became like a personal <laughs> kitchen for her. You're from Jerusalem, right? Yes, from Jerusalem. I am in Brooklyn 50 years. Long time. She's interesting when she is small. Like when she's five years, she want to stay in the kitchen and she want to cook everything. That's what inspired me, right? Because she, she had started that. I mean, initially it started in the house. Yes. Having nine children, you're already cooking for an army. I want to tell you <laughs> one thing. My life, God, my husband, and the kitchen. That's where her source of happiness comes from. Feeding people, giving. Yeah, just yes. that. Giving, not receiving. It's not just about giving, it's about making people gather. Yes, that's that's exactly. what that's what it is for her. I said, come, come, eat. I put that for everybody. Come eat. Now we are at our family farm, where we'll raise our livestock for our restaurants. Every morning I come here. First thing I do is to check on the water. They definitely have enough uh, grass to feed off of for the next three to four weeks. So all the covered ones are all pregnant and they'll be giving birth in the spring. And the ones that don't have covers, maybe four to five of them, those will uh, be served at Ayat pretty soon. I don't trust the meat in the market. They don't slaughter it properly. They do it in a very inhumane way. And that I'm not into. If I'm gonna be in the restaurant business and I'm gonna, my main ingredient is meat, I'll do it right. Halal is saying in the name of God, the most merciful. In Arabic, which is Bismillah rahman rahim and before even slaughtering it, you can't slaughter it in front of other animals. You gotta first rest it, let it like sleep, like kind of like relax in peace. And then when it relaxes, then you slaughter it. And then you wait for the blood to drain out until the soul fully comes out and then butcher it. If your butcher has a Middle Eastern background, you could just tell him I want cuts of lamb for mensup, and he'll ask you, do you want leg or shoulder or both? All right, so I'm just gonna throw the onions into the pot. For any dish, in my opinion, that's cooked with lamb, uh, you need cardamom because it really helps to reduce the gamey flavor of the lamb. And of course, the most important, we have our mensef spice, which is grown from an herb out in the Jordanian desert with the Bedouin people. And it really gives the flavor that makes mensef what it is. We're 
we're going to add the yogurt mixture to the um, lamb broth. The base is the jameed. So jameed is a fermented yogurt. The original form of jameed is in a rock. You have to break it into pieces, mix it with water, and have it dissolve until you can bring it to its liquefied form. The mensef dish originated in the desert. What did they really have, right? They were sheep herders, so they had to come up with some kind of dish that was hearty, but at the same time just consisted of just a few ingredients. Okay, so this is what some people call saj bread. In Arabic, it's either called ishraq or markuk. And the, this is a very thin type of bread. It's cooked on top of a saj, which is a hot plate that's shaped similar to a dome. And uh, this is very important when making the mensef because this is the first layer of the mensef that's put on the bottom of the tray. So we break it up into pieces, very informal. It doesn't have to be cut in any specific way. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle some ground cardamom on it. And now this is my mom's touch. She always likes to top with a little bit of cinnamon. This is the point in time where we soak the saj bread with the broth. All right, so now we're gonna put the rice. And now for the best part, now we're gonna top it with chunks of meat. We're gonna top it with the almonds and finish it off with some parsley. This dish is meant to bring people together. And what the Bedouin used to do when there was any conflict between the different tribes, one tribe would sacrifice a lamb and that lamb would be cooked and made into a mensef dish and the two tribes would come together and in a way break bread together to make peace. So this is a perfect example of a dish that really brings people together and unites people. Right now we're on 85th and 3rd Avenue. I was born and raised in Bay Ridge. I went to all the, school, the local schools here in Bay Ridge, uh, participated in all the Bay Ridge events growing up. I mean, I know it very well. We've got everybody in Bay Ridge. You know, you'll find people from all backgrounds in the Middle East. Yemeni, Egyptian, Moroccans, Algerians, then you have the Palestinians, the Lebanese, and the Syrians. Of course, we have a lot of Syrians. All right, but it's not just the Middle Eastern community. You've got the, uh, the Irish and the Norwegian, you've got the Italians, you've got a lot of Greeks. Uh, and it's very just small for the amount of diversity that it has, so it's pretty cool. There's definitely a community here in Bay Ridge. You know, like, uh, people do know each other, especially if you're a business owner. It's good to stay connected with everybody. My goal is to make it like a full menu of all of the traditional Palestinian cuisine that you can find. I want people to be able to come and say, oh my God, I, the last time I had this was at my grandma's house. Or I, I only have this back home. I've never seen it here being offered in, in New York in a restaurant. I'm Cuban and Palestinian, and he's full Palestinian. So this is a really authentic dish. So only the old school, like the mothers, the fathers, and the grandparents know how to make this, and it tastes just like that. You know, don't be conservative on the yogurt. <laughs> just keep, just keep pouring. There's mensef being made. There's a gathering with it. I think the most we've done in terms of Palestinian culture is just the folk dancing. There's a group called Freedom Depka, and they do the traditional folk dance. You went to Palestine, you will absolutely see people do the depka. You will never go to a Palestinian wedding without seeing the depka being done, at least twice. Natural Palestinian music, when you're dancing and it's all upbeat, you just naturally want to get into the depka rhythm. You want to start jumping. You know, a, a lot of Palestinian dances include jumps, right? High activity with the body. So that's that's what the depka is essentially, but it's just in a, in a more unified form. People holding hands, going in a line, in a circle. I don't think our intention opening up the restaurant was to promote awareness about the Palestinian people and the conflict that they go through. But it's impossible to be or identify as a Palestinian in this day and age without relating to the conflict. Palestine does exist. Palestine does have a culture, does have a tradition, does have a cuisine. What I want people to see through 
the restaurant and Palestinian cuisine and culture is that we're full of joy and welcoming and hospitality and happiness and we're very family oriented by nature. Palestinians in general are very family oriented. My mom was really happy about it. Ever since my father passed and then the kids got older and they all got married and had their own kids and got held up with their own lives, she lost a little touch with that feeling of being needing to be in the kitchen and feeding a whole family and and so when the restaurant opened that kind of revived in her that spirit revived in her and and she feels that things are actually moving living on through her you know she's 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 smiling <laughs> Without her, there's no ayat. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect ending. Done deal.